Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts and to another tutorial video, this time on how to design battle cruisers. And this is actually a bit of a two for one video. Uh, it is intended for those who are new to the game and new to the campaign mode. And <coughs> excuse me, how are you going to approach battle cruiser design for a campaign? I have picked 1930 and Spain the same uh, as I did for the how to build battleships video and I will be going over well glossing over some of the stuff that I went over in depth in the battleship video so I may refer back to that do go and watch that one too if you can if you're an experienced player well maybe you'll learn something maybe uh, you'll disagree with me um, if so say down in the comments now why is it two for one video well really there are two methods uh, two kind of approaches that can build very effective battle cruisers. The first is the true battle cruiser, and that's the one I'll be dealing with first. And the second is what I would call a cruiser killer battle cruiser. And you don't actually have to build those using battle cruisers. You can actually build them using heavy cruisers as well. Uh, so if you're coming here from the future how to build heavy cruisers video, um, and you're looking for the battle cruiser, battle uh, cruiser killer type, ship that also covers super cruisers so i think they basically different words for the same thing we're going to start off though with the true battle cruiser now for me in game true battle cruisers they should have the same kind of weapon that your battleships are using so 14 15 16 inch guns if you're looking at the 1930 era that's kind of the sweet spot for these types of ships. They tend to have slightly fewer guns and slightly less protection and slightly more speed, but they are cheaper. And that is how I would approach the design of them. So they are a cheaper way of getting battleship grade weapons out into the fleet. So the Princessa, this is the ship that I built in the how to build battleships video that came out at around 290 million dollars each so how do we go about it well first of all we go we only have one hull to choose for our true battle cruiser we're going to use the modern battle cruiser one we're going to use the large cruiser for our cruiser killer but it has an optimal maximum optimal speed of 32.5 knots now that's not great for a battle cruiser generally speaking we want to be going a bit faster and this is where on this particular hull because i want to push this because uh, the princessa can already do 32 knots we're going to go for a slightly different approach so this is how i built the battleship I left beam and draft at standard we put all the other sliders at standard and then uh, I could put the displacement down to minimum and then we built from there. This time I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to put draft and beam to minimum. Now what this means is that the ship will be able to go past the maximum optimal speed that's listed there. Um, and we'll have to see quite how far she gets in a moment. But doing this has some consequences and this will reduce the survivability of your ship. These are not free, just reduce the displacement. So this will reduce the survivability of our ship quite considerably. We will take more damage on a hit than the full-on battleship. But the aim of this is not to have a ship that's as good as the battleship. It's to get 80% of the way to the battleship. So she won't be able to tick, take hits quite as well, but she will be able to take hits. Um, in terms of the speed, we, we're we going to have to manually play around with this to see when our costs and displacements go crazy. And I think probably somewhere around 35, 36. Yeah, 35 to 36 knots gives us a big, big jump. So if we go for 35 knots, that is noticeably faster than our battleship and should mean that we're able to run away from anything that could threaten us. Uh, in terms of tower, uh, personally, 
<laughs> uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm more looking at ba the base accuracy stat. Uh, it just goes up by one each time, I think. I oh, know both of these are the same base accuracy wise and very similar with the other stats, but this is a big jump. Yeah, 1.7 million and about 200 tons. So I'm going to go for the standard tower three. It means it's going to look, have the basically the same forward tower as the princessa. And our rear towers, we have a few options. Now, in terms of stats, they are, well, pretty similar. 15.5. This is the best one in terms of stats. So it would be nice if we could get it in. It is quite large. But I think we can do it. Not, not if the towers are there. We're going to have to move them forward. There we go. So I think we can I think we can use these. And then we're starting to look at gun layout. Now, because this has an integrated bar bit on the front, um, you might think, oh, he's going to go for the same layout he did for the battleship. A, B, X, triple 15-inch guns. And you could. But generally, my rule of thumb is, whereas battleships tend to have either three triple turrets or four twin turrets, battle cruisers are generally better off with either two triples or three dual turrets. And I think because we've got three obvious mounting points, three dual turrets will work very nicely. And I've gone over on the forward weight offset. And let me just move everything back. Just so that we're not dealing with crazy offsets to start off with. Something like that. So that is not as much firepower as our full-on battleship but it is respectable six 15 inch guns and because they're jewels they will have pretty good accuracy that's still reasonably scary uh, again i'm going to choose the same four inch secondary guns for destroyer shoeing uh, and we can stick one up here that means that we get Five aside, and by the way, no, a 15-inch gun does not fit up here. Um, <laughs> five aside, <clears throat> rather than the six that the battleship had. And just like the battleship, I'm going to sprinkle some two-inch guns in. I can put a gun on top of a gun, but they tend to be a bit annoying um, to actually get to function properly. And I happen to know that if I put it on B turret, it won't work. Some hulls are just a bit, bit weird when it comes to that. Uh, we're going to go with oil, balanced, gear turbines, an auxiliary diesel, the best um, steering and shaft setup and, and all the rest of it. Uh, just like this is the exact same choices as the battleship. Uh, in terms of funnel, we could go for a big single funnel, but it's not quite enough. So... If we go for a big funnel and then a second smaller funnel, yes, our engine efficiency is way over the top, but that's good because these ships uh, can be good in two roles. They can be good to supplement your battle line, although that's not the best use of them. The best use of them is as solo kind of hunters because there's really the whole idea behind this type of ship is that it can sink anything that it likes. <laughs> and if it doesn't want to take something on, it can run away. That's kind of the idea behind them. Um, in terms of protection, these are still an investment. This is going to be an expensive ship. So unlike Jackie Fisher, I prefer to invest uh, in everything except a triple bottom hull which usually isn't worth it. And just like the battleship, um, I would generally go with increased AP for a ship like this. However, battle cruisers can uh, find themselves up against smaller ships more, more often. So there is something to be said for going for a standard ratio. So just, just to be a bit different, I'm going to go for a standard ratio on these. Um, and because we're going to be using the same guns, we're going to go for the same 
base fused TNT4 tube powder super heavy shells. Super heavy shells, by the way, are now a little bit more expensive. So the tube powder super heavy, I think, now comes out to more than a cordite standard build. So tube powder super heavy is 87 million. Cordite standard is 83. So you want to save a bit, you can go for a cordite build. I'll show off how to do uh, a cordite build with the cruiser killer. And we want the best turrets, the best range. You no, know, there's no reason to cheap out. We're going to stick with a hydrophone uh, rather than a sonar set for the same reason as a battleship. This, this thing should probably have an escort, um, but there is more of an argument for putting a sonar set uh, on this type of ship, especially if you are sending them out as kind of lone hunters and, and all the rest of it. We're also going to stick to exactly the same way of armoring the ship, um, but we'll get to that in a minute before I forget. I need to do the guns, and I think I'll do exactly what I did with... Is it updating? Sometimes the gun... Yeah, the gun lengths don't, don't update properly. You just have to take all but one turret off. There we go. So we're going for the 15-inch... 45 caliber gun, which gives us plenty of HE pen and plenty of AP pen against both belt and deck, uh, and a decent rate of fire of 1.38 rounds a minute. Like these are perfectly capable weapons. Secondary guns, we're just going to make as long as possible. Uh, secondary guns don't need armoring up. We're going to go for maximum armor on our turrets. And for the exact same logic that I did in the battleship video, I'm going to go for a 20 inch main belt and a 10 inch main deck. And then the rest of the ship is just going to have splinter protection. So this is again, an all or nothing type of ship. This type of ship is much more suited to chasing down enemy battleships and, and taking them out um, and things like that. And you'll notice that we're a little bit over and we haven't got to the inner layering. So with uh, a battle cruiser like this, you are making compromise. So one compromise we've made is we don't have the same level of firepower. The other one is we don't have the same level of protection. Firstly, from uh, reducing our beam and draft. But secondly, we're also not going to have the same inner layering protection. And you might be thinking, well, why are you typing just spamming the thickest uh, option. Well, there's a trick. Uh, a pretty effective scheme is just have three layers the same thickness, 1.5 inch, which is the splinter protection. This helps make sure that HE shells basically have no hope of getting penetrations against your Citadel, even if they're huge. And it can help against AP shells, especially from weaker guns. But it's not going to be the kind of super layering that the battleship had. But if you if you max all of the layers out, and then you take the top one and you put 1.5, it will put 1.5 on every single layer. Which is a nice little trick if you just want uniform layers all the way through the ship. And we end up 5% overweight. Now, that's fine because we did a minimum displacement build. So we can just now increase our displacement and our costs until the ship changes size. We could actually go for the longer one. Uh, that's fine. Uh, about there. It's about 35,000 tons. We can do, might as well see when do we change length again. There. We could go for 35, 36,000 ton ship. That's noticeably... It's not that much smaller than the battleship, but it is noticeably smaller we also gives us a bit more room to play around on the hull i might have to take this secondary off but uh we'll deal with it in a second there we go and this one and this one because they're in the wrong place uh, one here one here and one Cap, really there 
and we have a little bit of an half weight offset and again we should be able to fix that easily enough because this turret can come back And then I realize I have to shift everything forward again. And this kind of noodling is is very helpful. Um, I know it takes a while. Now we've got a four weight offset, which is fine. We can move this turret back a little, little bit. There we go. Half a percent. That's fine. Uh, just check all your guns have good fire arcs. So there we go. A pretty, pretty decent looking thing and we have a little bit of displacement left for nice to have so nice to have on this type of ship we could go for more speed we could go for more range we could go for more bulkheads we could go for increased crew quarters we could carry extra ammunition we could carry a sonar set all of those are quite nice to have so let's grab a sonar set um, let's grab the spacious crew quarters. Hmm. And you can get many bulk kids in? Not quite. Yeah, I could go get many bulk kids if I took a standard crew quarters. Let's do that. Um, the many bulk kids slightly offsetting our beam and draft and reduced layering. And then we end up with a ship that is 36,500 tons. 178 million compared to the full-on battleship which was 290 or thereabouts and you can see why this type of ship can be really useful because 290 compared to 180 would mean that yeah if you built three of these it costs you 540 million uh, and you're getting three of these for every two battleships. So they're, they're cheaper. And they are still capable ships. These have pretty nice protection. They have pretty nice firepower. They are fast. But they won't be able to tank hits like battleships can. So this type of ship can actually be extremely useful... Um, to give you just more firepower um, where you need it. So if you're finding that, ah, uh, you know, really struggling for numbers of battleships, well, this thing can be very, very useful. Uh, let's take her out and uh, see how she does. Um, I have arrayed up uh, an enemy battle cruiser, a heavy cruiser, a light cruiser, and a destroyer. So you can test her against a bunch of different types of ships. Um, it's a pretty hard fight for a ship like this to, to, to get into, but in theory, we should be able to, should be able to deal with it. Now, maybe you don't like this type of ship. Maybe it's not how you want to run your battle cruisers and, you know, different people have different opinions. Um, but one thing I, I would uh, steer away from is the historical approach of, well, mainly the Royal Navy, but others as well, where their approach to battle cruiser design was to take something with the firepower of a battleship, give it the speed, give it lots of speed, but to do that, they just took all the protection off. So this is a little bit less well protected. Compared, oh my god, I started really close. <laughs> compared to a, a real battleship. But, only a little. These things can take hits. Looks good too, in my opinion. That's a bit of a shame about the uh, towers, uh, the towers, the funnels not being the right height. But uh, from this angle, you can't really tell. There we go. Can 
going to fire any time today, chaps? Yes? No? Oh, I've still got a fecking cadet crew on, haven't I? I'm always doing that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so for the testing, I need to remember to put a crew on. Uh, the reason I don't put a crew on is simply because... Uh, to, at base is because it will mess up the uh, costings for you, but uh, that would have helped. I was wondering why they weren't firing. It's like, oh yeah, of course they're a cadet crew, so they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> My apologies. I'll probably do that again when we look at the cruiser killer. It's important to note as well that when you're playing the game, if you are going for two different archetypes with your ships or you have multiple classes of ship because you've been playing the campaign for a while the game doesn't really let you say well i want this ship on convoy raiding and i want this ship which is the same type of ship it was also a battle cruiser to be in the battle line or, or and things like that it's not an option for you so do be aware one of the reasons I like these kind of true battle cruisers is they can end up in fleet battles. They can end up in uh, duels with enemy battleships or battle cruisers, which can have pretty big guns. Um, it is just generally handy. Right, let's have a look at what the AI built. So this should be their battle cruiser. Mm, that's quite a lot of firepower. Uh, 14 inch guns this turret is far too far forward like I, I would actually think that was quite good if they just took that off just get rid of that turret uh, pretty nice looking heavy cruiser with uh, 10 and a half inch guns okay so a cruiser super cruiser light cruiser that looks like a destroyer and a pretty normal looking destroyer. Okay. Our accuracy is not brilliant. What's our range? Yeah, we are at fairly long range for this ship. Ooh. That's a 14 inch hit to the extended uh, bit of the ship. Yeah, we're getting that weird thing where the shells are fired off into the, <coughs> into the sky. But you can see there, this is part of the result of having the reduced beam and draft. Do test it out. It works better with some hulls than others. But we've got quite a lot of flooding damage from that one hit. And that is just part of the problem with doing that. As I said, they can take hits, but they're just not as good at it. be help helpful if we actually got some hits back. Let's deal with that smaller vessel. Uh, another flooding hit. Boom. Good hit. Ooh. That was nasty. That was an aft belt pen. But you wouldn't know it from the damage. Again. Then really not going to be able to take hits all day, but don't be too spooked by huge numbers. Like, she's still going, and she can still fight. Oh, was, the, was it the light cruiser I was hitting? Oh, that's even better. Okay. Right, let's get the main guns there and the secondaries there. I assume that's the enemy battlecruiser. Yes, it is. Wow, it's fast. Okay. And we have damaged instability. Pretty sure. Oh, uh, we're not able to fire. New. No. We fire on the destroyer, maybe? Yeah, we can. Alright, shoot at what you can hit. <laughs> Oh, 
This is very much not the sort of engagement this ship is going to be any good at, but it goes to show you the, the weaknesses of it and how it can just take a huge number of hits very quickly. These are not brawlers. The battleship would be able to deal with this fine. Battlecruiser, not so much. And it is almost certainly been from those... Yeah, the 14-inch guns, primarily. You can see why the many bulkheads, or possibly even maximum bulkheads on a ship like this, is handy. And it's nearly all from extended belt hits, simply because of the way we've armoured up the ship. She's just not going to be as good at... Um, being peppered from multiple directions. I'm curious what, how much, oh, okay, well, I don't feel so bad. This thing's way more expensive, ludicrously fast. If we'd actually been able to get a hit on it, it would have died very quickly. So if we did this one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, there we go, splash the destroyer. Uh, if we did this one... That light cruiser really not sunk yet. Uh, if we did this one-on-one, -on -one, we would be able to take out the deflinger pretty easily, I reckon. But she's got all this kind of help. But again, like... We're still going. They haven't sunk us, and probably what would happen at this point is we'd continue to just get away, because they're just getting partials... They're, well, hitting the funnel doesn't really count. But they're, they're having a hard time flooding us out because this part, which is protected by the Citadel, is hard for them to actually get a flooding hit on. Yes, we're slowed. Yes, we're finding it difficult, but that, like, cruiser can't catch up. The heavy cruiser is annoying, but there's only so much you can do with repeated funnel hits. And their battle cruiser cannot close in because if we get a hit on it, it will it will go down. Uh, flooding's a little bit worse. Interesting to actually test this thing to destruction. There we go, a little bit of flooding coming through. But I'm actually curious to see in the the post battle results. So our ship with crew two thirty, well two thirty one. Their battle crews are way more expensive at 368. They also had 154 million heavy cruiser, a, an 82 million light cruiser, 35 million, um, well, 36 destroyer as well. But give almost as good as she got. It was nearly all from the 14 and 10 inch guns, which were primarily hitting the the smaller arm you can see there on the pen table you know, the over pens and the the pens were against 3.3 inch armor which means it was hitting the the extended portions of the ship and this is as i said you know um these types of ships are cheap battleships they can threaten things but throw them into a fight like that um and they will struggle. They would. They do take more damage. But I just wanted to show kind of what that increased damage actually looked like in a fight. Uh, we're going to try something even harder now. We're going to do the same fight, but this time we're going to build build a cruiser killer. And as I said, this also counts um, if you are doing a super cruiser build. Um, whether you prefer doing it on the super cruiser build. Or whether you prefer doing it on a large cruiser, up to you. But this type of ship, this type of ship is not designed to fight other battle cruisers or battleships at all. It is designed to take on heavy cruisers mainly, but heavy cruisers like cruisers, things like that. Uh, so it is going to have a different approach. First of all, uh, this particular hull. The max optimal speed of 29.5 knots isn't the best. Um, so I'm actually going to reduce the draft. I'm going to leave beam as it is, though, uh, just so that we can push it to about, I reckon, 32 knots without it getting 
too expensive. Yeah, 32 knots. So it would be the same speed as our battleship. Um, meaning that they can also, if they happen to be in a battle with the battleships, which is quite common because the game will go, oh, it's a battle cruiser. Um, it's able to keep up. So we don't want it going too slow. And it needs to not necessarily be able to catch, but it does need to be able to go to reasonable speed compared to cruisers and things. Uh, tower selection for the forward towers, you know, not much in the way of choice on this one. But there are basically two choices here. We can either go for this enormous rear tower or a small one. Now, small towers have a quality all of their own because they shorten your citadel and that keeps the ship light. So a small tower sometimes is better than a big one simply because it is smaller and it lets you have a more compact ship. And also this type of thing, that is a lot of wasted space on superstructure for not very much in the way of stat, stat gains. So we'll go with that one. In terms of the guns, 14, 15, 16 inch, that's too slow a firing weapon for this type of ship. We're not trying to kill battleships with this. So these, this kind of class of weapon, that's not really what we're looking at. What we're looking at is this, the 10, the 12, and the 13 inch gun. This is kind of our, our, our sweet spot here. Now, if you're doing this as a cruiser killer, uh, super cruiser, then you want to go for the 11 inch gun because you don't have access to 12 or 13. But large cruisers like this do have access to the 12 and 13 inch gun. And if you look at the stats between them, the 12 inch gun is just really, really good. <laughs> it's kind of the best gun in terms of accuracy. The accuracy kind of builds until you reach 12 inch guns and then it drops off once you go past 12 inch. So 12 inch guns are a real sweet spot weapon. We're definitely going to go with a 12 inch gun. For a cruiser killer, you want a similar approach to a battleship in terms of number of guns. So you want between eight and 10 or even as many as 12 guns. Um, we're going to go with nine. Okay, so we're going to go with an ABX triple setup and that's simply because I have the built it one built-in barbette already. Uh, we are also going to get the same four-inch secondary guns. And on this one, we're probably only going to get... No, 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 we could get all... We could get five. Same as the true battlecruiser. And we... Uh, what, like one two-inch gun? Uh, okay, we'll stick one on there. That one doesn't work. That one will block the turret. Oh well, we'll get a couple, couple of two-inch guns. It's nothing, nothing special. Um, and we're going to do the gun setup first, just so that we can, we can have a look at them. Uh, this type of ship definitely go for standard ratio. Uh, we'll come back to the HE shells in a minute. And you want your punchiest uh, AP shell. Now for this build, I'm going to go for a cordite build, partly to save money. Uh, but also because really we just want these things, we're dealing with lighter targets. Really we're we're looking for the the damage, that 5% shell damage. That's really nice. So that's kind of what we're after. Best uh, loaders and turret traverse, especially turret traverse, definitely worth investing in. Um, get a radar. These ships do benefit from having a sonar set simply because they're designed to kind of take on cru cruisers and destroyers and things like that. So you want that protection. Now, in terms of the gun, these have a pretty good rate of fire, 1.69 rounds a minute. Um, in terms of their pen, at 15,000 meters, we can go through 32.8, so the divide by 2.5, Go about through about 13 inches of armor, which is not bad, actually. Uh, some battleships will have armor that, that low. Um, it's more than enough to deal with uh, heavy cruisers, but it could be a little bit better. So I'm actually going to lengthen these guns. I think 
six, is it updating or not? I can never tell. Yeah, it is. Okay, let's go for a 60 caliber. So the reason I'm going for a 60 caliber reduces the rate of fire down to 1.5 rounds a minute, which is still fine. Our deck pen still looks good, but we just get the, just that little bit more uh, pen. Now we could go through 13 point, 13 and three quarters. Just, just a teeny bit more pin, but a teeny bit more accuracy as well. Like that base accuracy of 5% at 15,000 meters, that's really, really good. Um, then we need to look at our HE pen. Now, if we go with base fuse like we did with the 15-inch guns, we're looking at destroyer murdering 4-inch pens at around 10,000 meters, which is fine. Um but I would probably go soft cap so that you can push that out to the 15,000 meter range. That's just the way I would the way I would go about it. So this thing should be able to murder destroyers and cruisers from about 15,000 meters away, which is absolutely fine. Now these things are still an investment. Um, so you do want to protect them, uh, but we'll come back to the armor in a moment. First of all, we'll get all of our engines set up. It's going to be the exact same setup. Uh, definitely always worth investing in the uh, steering gear for these because they will be doing lots of dodging. Definitely worth investing in their torpedo protection. Uh, all that's already been done. And now we're looking at the armor. Now, I would, again, just maximum armor your turrets, potentially, although that is quite a lot. Maybe not a maximum armored turret, but if we can get it get it in, why not? You don't want your turrets blowing off. Oh, and uh, of course, we should lengthen our secondaries before I forget. Um, however, we're not going to go for the all or nothing well, strictly all or nothing scheme that we did with the battle cruiser. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to protect our ship against more kind of just the hail of gunfire that you get with these small ships. And I'm just going to use a very rough rule of thumb, and it does work perfectly for 12-inch guns. And that is we're just going to take the 12-inch, which is our gun size, and that is going to be our main belt, 12. And then we're going to half it for the six inch, and that's going to be our four and a half belt. Now, if you look at the pen on these things, uh, a four or an half belt of six gives an effective protection of 15 inch when you're looking at the pen tables, which obviously is not going to help against a main gun. But if you look at a four inch gun, which, you know, fairly typical on a destroyer or as a secondary weapon, you know, they're going to have to get within 3,000 meters. To be able to hurt us at all with small weapons like a four four inch or lower and at the same range we are getting like 50 percent base accuracy so they're going to die so this is to protect us against hits from mediums to small caliber stuff like four and five inch guns from destroyers the main deck again just six inch half the belt and the four and a half deck will half again to three half the superstructure uh for the superstructure again so one and a half uh our main tower same as our turret so we'll go for that super chunky 17.4 and then the inner layers we're going to copy the battleship scheme so we're going to half our belt half it again and half it again and then we're going to go half our main deck half it again and half it and then just have another 1.5 layer so we're going to do the same trick we're going to max these out and then all the middle one 1.5 and it'll update that is a well protected ship from cruiser level weapons it will not survive against big caliber guns um it is going to suffer and uh we're not finished we need to put a funnel on uh probably probably a single big funnel oh it is enough 
Okay, we can go for a single big funnel. Um, what about if we push... We push the speed at all? No, 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 it gets way too expensive. Um, but we have loads of displacement left, and we're on minimum. So this is where we get into the nice halves. Do we bring our draft back up? We could. What happens if we go back to draft zero? Yep. So we're going to bring our draft back up to zero, so that we don't we're not suffering any penalty there. We are also increases our range for free. We are also going to go for maximum bulk kits, spacious crew quarters, because these things will do double duty as long range convoy murdering uh, ships. We can get maximum range, and we still have a little bit of displacement left. You could bring extra ammunition. I'm going to bring an RDF for the gun, aiming speed, reconnaissance bonuses. And oh, that's pretty much it. We've got a little bit of displacement spare for refits and the like. Got a little bit of a forward weight offset. So we can also use the weight to just push this turret back. And make it a 360 degree turret. And improve its fire arc because we do have the weight to spare. So... Just going to push that turret back. Um, and there we go. 0.1% weight offset. Pitch and roll are very good. Engine efficiency is fine. We're good to go. And this is 153 million. Compared to the true battle cruiser that was... Well, she wasn't 230 because she... Shouldn't have a crew. Was 178. So it's not that much cheaper. It's not that much cheaper. It has smaller guns. Don't send this thing up against a battleship. It probably won't do very well. But it can be a very, very useful type of ship. Let's try her out. So, again, this type of battle is very difficult. Uh, outnumbered. Uh, and there's a battlecruiser class ship, which if it spawns in with big guns, uh, 14 or bigger, then you know we're in trouble but we can we can compare against the true battlecruiser and how the ships handle hopefully it'll load up in a minute building destroyer and let me know in the comments as well like how do you set up your battlecruisers there's lots of different ways of doing it these these two i think are the the most effective but not everyone agrees. Some people do like the Jackie Fisher style ship. I'm just a uh, big... It's, that's a big no for me. You see, we've got a really good... Um, good angle on that rear turret. The other advantage of this type of ship, the 12-inch uh, uh, battlecruiser is you can build these very early on in the campaign. Uh, so if you're starting at an earlier start date, like the 1910 or 1920, uh, you can build a ship not dissimilar to this very early on. And you can just keep updating it and uh, keeping it current. And it will do well for you. We just keep yeah, they got 14-inch guns, so I would expect to lose this fight, We're given that the enemy has some 14-inch guns. Uh, six of them. That's a bit better. Uh, the heavy cruiser uh, doesn't have big guns. That must be the light, and that's the destroyer I'm shooting at. Okay. Cadet crew. God... God damn it. Every time. Every single blinking time. I was like, why is the ship not hitting? Why is the guns taking so long? It's because it's got a cadet crew. Uh, <laughs> invest in your crew training. <laughs> invest in your crew training, boys and girls. Very important that you invest in your training. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I was like, what? 12 inch guns are normally way more accurate than that. Oh, right. Um, earlier versions, uh, if you're building these early on in the campaign, they're more likely to have the Ford Twin um, 12 inch guns. Or you could build this with 11s potentially as well, or 13s uh, relatively early as well. It doesn't have to be 12s. Doing donuts, will looks fit. Now this is where I'm going to wish I had the uh, the tube powder built because I'm not going to have the same kind of reliability going through armor. But yeah, it will work. Enemies just dodging all over the place, which is very frustrating. Ow! 14 inch gun, lovely. So yeah, not the type of fight this ship should be going into. That's like the first one we faced. Okay. Oh, there we go. Got a penetration hit on their tower. Bounced something off. Got a bit of a flooding hit. Blocked another hit. It's not like this thing isn't armoured. It's just 14 inch guns are gonna... Yeah, there we go. Hurt on the extended portions especially. And we've shifted target. No, don't do that. Ow. As I said, 14 inch guns are bad. And you can see this ship is really struggling against the battlecruiser. Now, if I had both ships, if I had the true and the cruiser killer, this would be fine because I could send the true battlecruiser against theirs. We can see we're not taking uh, nearly as much damage from, you know, eight, six inch guns, five inch guns, and things like that. Um, as you might expect, we're keeping that out. But 14 inch guns, that's that's going to be tough. Not designed to deal with that. And again, severely outnumbered. How much is there? Yeah, 376 million on, the, on their <laughs> battle cruisers. Very expensive compared to ours. Always going to be a tricky fight. But you see 9% accuracy against the destroyer. Even when you've taken some hits, that's really not bad. And those 12 inch guns doing nasty things. Come on. Well, I think the destroyer's disabled. Slash sunk. They're yeah, firing torps at me. But we're not out of it yet. You can see these are tough ships. Uh, and that's helped by the fact that we don't have the reduced beam and draft. We don't have that issue. See the absolute swarm of torpedoes. Which is why I do recommend for battle cruisers putting uh, some sonar on. And of course our rudder is destroyed so we can't manoeuvre it. Uh, uh, we're going to take a tour. Oh, maybe not. Now we're okay. Try and hit the heavy cruiser. It's right there. But yeah, there's only so long these types of ships will survive against heavy firepower. Don't do it. <laughs> but this thing's much more of a brawler than the true battlecruiser. So, I mean, you don't have to. 
uh, use the armor scheme that I suggested for the true battle cruiser. You may want to go for a slightly different armor scheme, and I just might actually be worth showing off. So this is where I wish I had some torpedoes, but uh, never mind. Usually not a good option on these ships, but very occasionally the AI will do something stupid like that. Not even sure we can get a get a bead on them. Yeah, down we go. To fire. Interesting. Um, however, again, we, we we gave pretty much as good as we got, dealing a reasonable amount of damage before we sunk, and most of it was from yeah those fourteen inch guns. So you can see if we hadn't have come up against an enemy battle cruiser, we probably would have been fine. And the reverse is true for the true battle cruiser. If it had come against just that ma enemy battle cruiser, it would have been fine. So neither's perfect. Neither can do everything. Use the battleship for that. Um, but hopefully this has proven somewhat useful and helps you get um, ships that are reasonable out. Uh, again, restraint, very important. Don't go full on with crazy... Um, crazy heavy ships but i mean if you did have this ship and you, you weren't happy with the performance there is something you could do to fix it you could increase the displacement up until the ship changes size to there it does add a considerable amount of bulk uh and then just up arming your main belt 14 the go you could go 14 7 because your turrets are already really well protected. You might even be able to go for a 16. No, 16 is pushing it. But you could go for a 14.7. So that just gives you a little bit more protection. Uh, and you can you can fiddle around with potentially thicker inner belts and, and things like that. Um, you might want to reduce the turret thickness. Because I did go crazy with the turret protection. And uh, you could go for thicker four and a half belts and things like that uh, and you can fiddle around you can try and try and uh, get these ships to the level that you want them but for me um you know you can see how the, the cost is uh, ballooning somewhat and i prefer having <laughs> more ships rather than more ships that are good rather than a very small number of ships that are amazing if that makes any sense so, how to build battle cruisers, a bit of a long one, two for one, and you didn't get to see the battle cruisers doing anything actually good, which is on purpose, and it is to show that, yes, you can build them as cheap battleships, yes, you can build them as cruiser killers, but be aware of what role they are intended to fill, because if they get into a fight that they're not designed for, so for a true battle cruiser, if you find yourself being swarmed with light ships, or for a cruiser killer, if you find yourself going up against an enemy capital ship, then run away. <laughs> Discretion is the better part of that. So do be aware if you build this type of either of these types of ships, what they can do and what they cannot. Anyway, I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Bye for now.